We got this one from uh, TimCast.com. Quote, they will lose and they know it. Democrats will lose if election is a referendum on Biden. Saki says, follow the money, said the former uh, press secretary. She says, if it's a referendum on, the, on Biden, they're going to lose. But if it's a referendum on extremism, they're going to win. All right. Here's the next story. Michael Moore predicts Democrat landslide against the traitors. Friday on HBO's real-time liberal documentary filmmaker Michael Moore defied conventional wisdom and predicted a landslide victory for Democrats in November's midterm election. There are so many signs of this. I think, honestly, I think if we all do our work and we all get people out to get out there and we get ourselves, I think we can throw out a huge number of these Republican traitors in November. He says, I think that there's going to be such a landslide against the traitors, especially the 147 Republicans who just hours after the insurrection voted to not certify the elected president of the United States, Joe Biden. I think there's going to be so many people coming out to vote. And then lastly, with the hat trick from the conservative brief, pollster, GOP midterm turnout will exceed already high expectations as parties' fortunes grow. So what's it going to be? Huh. Saki says if it's about extremism, they win. If it's about Biden, they lose. Michael Moore says the Democrats are going to win. And then this uh, this pollster is saying that the Republicans are going to win. So uh, what, what is it? What do we got? It's, it's what really, do we have? I don't know. Yeah, it's really hard to say. I mean, yeah. uh, it was uh, Joe Rogan um, and another uh, very popular commentator. I forgot his name right now. I'm blanking right now. That, that also was from the left that came out and said, hey, everyone should vote Republican for this upcoming midterm. It's going to be... Was it that... That well, was Rogan. It was, it was Rogan and somebody else. Was, uh, I forgot who was else. Kalinsky? I don't He's think it was, no, 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 it was it was somebody it was, it was somebody else coming from a, a very surprising figure that 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 you know uh, shocked a lot of people that that this person actually said this I I, I have it somewhere here in my notes uh, but but it's going to be interesting to see the turnout to see if people actually do decide to vote or whether they're just so disenfranchised with this kind of emotional manipulation that they're Aaron just going to tune out Aaron Rodgers yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. he was uh, I thought it was you yeah, said it was a leftist commentator Rogan. and I was like I thought it was Aaron Rodgers it was right? yeah Aaron Rodgers on Rogan but you know what was interesting is that I think it does have to do with if, if people are going to turn out so many people are dissatisfied nothing really seems to be going right in the country you have biden's really horrible speech with his blood red background you know speaking in front of the independence hall i found it really troubling that speech and i think a lot of people did i talked to democrats who also found it troubling um for different reasons but believed that it would be effective for you know, Democrats to uh, be motivated to go vote. And I think it was, to a certain extent, motivating for them. Uh, the GOP, I think, really should lean into the issues that Americans care about. McCarthy, like, barely made any noise the other day, even though he gave that whole speech. But you did see him starting to unite a little bit with the new right. He had MTG sitting right behind him yeah. in a pink blazer. I was really glad to see her there. Um, she's someone who initially I was like, I'm not so sure. And I've really come to have a lot of... Uh, you know, a lot of respect for her. I like her a lot. So um, I liked to see that. I like to see that being a little more unified. But I think they have to lean more into the new right stuff than the establishment stuff. Well, the, the, the issue is that the what people care about doesn't generate clicks. Mm -hmm. So if you're like, let's talk about economics. The average, the average person is not going to share a story that says, like, here's how we improve the economy. Right. What's, what's going to get shares is like, Trump supporters are fascists and Democrats are giving children sex changes. Right. So those end up becoming dominant issues. And I'm not sure if you've experienced this too, but stories about the border, which people do say they care about immigration, border stories like don't get a ton of shares either. Why do you think that yeah. is? I think because it's super depressing to see little kids abandoned at the border. I don't think we've had any reasonable solutions that have been enacted other than, you know, I mean, during the Trump years, it slowed down substantially, I think. Um, but it, I just don't think it's an issue that people want to deal with. I think people are primarily conflicted about it and it's like going cognitive to be, dissonance. Yeah. I think there's something like that going on. With I, I think what I'm going to be looking for in this upcoming midterm is, is one, how many people come out Two, how effective is social media going to be and big and, and, and corporate media in, in swaying the emotions of people to vote a particular way. I think it's going to be very interestingly because historically, uh, the president's party loses the midterms uh, almost every time 
uh, throughout the, the the midterms that always happened throughout uh, you know the, the latest uh, the races. That happened so, to Obama, right? That happened to Obama. That happened, to, I think, to Bush as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it happened seventeen out of the nineteen times uh, since the last last time. So, right. it, so sorry, the bazunkas are. I know. Uh, I keep looking at a hard time <laughs> from staring at your chest, here. I'm actually wondering, like, is it is it having an impact? I on think so. I mean, there's Aaron Rodgers right, right behind me, and I was like, who, that guy? who is that? I don't know. I'm acting like a boob. You're having like baby brain over there. I, I you know, know, I know, I know. It, it happens. It's, 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 you know, the power it gets to me here. <laughs> Preparing to be a parent. Maybe uh, I won't tell anyone my private life, Don't but but that's the topic good. of what right. we're talking about here. Great. Now the midterms here, as we're trying to focus here, <laughs> Ian. Before the show, <laughs> when when Luke walks out with the fake boobs, Ian goes, "This is looking good." <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Should have wore a V-neck, but uh, anyway. Uh, it is going to be interesting because it is going going to tell a lot and it's going to foreshadow what's going to be happening in 2024. So who's going to have the power? Who's going to have the influence? Who's going to have, you know, the authority moving forward in this country, I think is going to dictate a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a lot of the very important like, things. I, I just want to say, you know, in 2020, Texas filed a lawsuit against Pennsylvania and you had about, I think, 46 states signed on to one side of the lawsuit or the other questioning or opposing the results of the election due to uh, procedural changes in certain states. So the Texas v. Pennsylvania say, uh, suit was specifically how Pennsylvania handled the election. Nothing to do with fraud. It was about, like, can you have universal mail-in voting? And Texas mm-hmm. was like, uh, the Supreme Court said they wouldn't hear it. I think it was Thomas and Alito who said they would. And I was kind of shocked by this. Not really, but they should have heard the case. Texas has a right to make their argument as a state in the union. I thought they should have heard the case, too. Yeah, it's like if there is a question about the procedure by which a vote, uh, a procedure by which which votes are cast. And one of the states says that what Texas basically said is that Pennsylvania is negating our votes by holding their election in such a way that violates the U.S. Constitution. Right. They also said that the Pennsylvania was holding their election in a way that I think violated Pennsylvania law. Right. And then which you was know, the violation. Yeah. But then ultimately, I think the Pennsylvania Supreme Court said, no, it's fine, mm-hmm. which is just the whole thing still contested. No one's satisfied with the results. But my point is not to say that anyone's right or wrong in that whole argument. I'm, I, we can have an argument about that later. My point is when you have almost half the country suing the other half, like, is that not indicative of something really crazy happening in this country? Then you get January 6th. Then you get, you know, I think uh, Aaron Rodgers was killed before January 6th, right? It was was it, was it 2020? I think Aaron Rodgers is the football oh, player. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's doing Aaron fine. Dan- yeah, Sorry. He's fine. Yeah. Aaron Daniels. Focus yeah, here, yeah. Tim. I know there's a lot <laughs> to distract you here with. I know. I'm staring at Luke. Yeah, Daniels, Daniels, was the, Daniels was yeah. the summer of 2020, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah, it was Aaron Daniels summer. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so you, had, you, had that, you have that happen, and then you get January 6th. Now you, you have a bunch of these stories. Mm-hmm. In Provo, Utah, they ran up to a, uh, BLM ran up to a, a, a random person and shot him in their car. That's right. A random person. There was a thing in Denver. What was, it? what was the thing in Denver? The oh, thing yeah. in Denver, there was a guy who had been sort of hired as a security guard, but had never been vetted shot and shot oh, a conservative right. activist. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In Denver. And then after all of that, what I think happens is you're a frog in a pot and the water's boiling. Mm-hmm. And so then you see people be like, you know what? I went outside and nothing's happening. And it's like, do you have amnesia? Did you forget everything that happened in the past couple of years that's going to be in the history well, books forever? People do forget everything, right? Yeah. People forget everything uh, except what happens right around when they're currently thinking about everything. You know, they don't think about what happened before. Um, everyone wants you to forget about what happened in 2020. Everyone wants you to forget about COVID. They don't want you to remember that your kids got sent home from school, that your kids are like doing math at some grade level well below their current age. They don't want you to think about any of that. They're just like, that's over. We're moving on. You know, so, someone in the chat said crime is not civil war. And I'm not saying it is. Right. I'm saying that bleeding Kansas also wasn't civil war. But people were fighting over the issue of slavery. And if we're now dealing with a story where an old woman was shot in the back because she was arguing about, you know, being, being opposed to abortion. Many people have argued that abortion could be the moral catalyst for. Well, you've war. said that yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've said it. But but many other smarter people than me have, have made a similar point. I think um, I, I, who was it? it was the Guardian published an article about it might have been. Um, I don't want I don't want to say the wrong person, so I'll avoid. But it was like a prominent leftist who said they thought that abortion would be a would be a catalyst for civil war, I not unlike slavery. Was. Yeah. And so so now you have with. This is, this is interesting with Lindsey Graham pushing for a national 15-week mm-hmm. abortion ban, 
which only really helps the Democrats. But imagine if it has no impact. Imagine if Republicans still win and, according to conservative brief, win better than anyone expected. The left is going to be like, OK, now they're going to nationally ban abortion. Yo, someone just got shot for being pro-life. Mm-hmm. What do you think is going to happen if the Republicans win in the midterms? Joe Biden will say, I'll veto it. Trump will then say, if you elect me in 2024, the first thing I will sign is the 15 week abortion ban. Right. And then they're going to be screaming and smashing everything, which will only make their chances of winning worse. I think it should be a state's rights issue. I think. Yeah, I agree. St- I think it should stay there. It is a state's rights it issue. It is a state's rights, rights issue. Yeah, that's right. And Amazing. So, and now we're moving back into an era of potential civil war where there's a state's rights issue around, right. well, around the right it, to it's life. Always, it's always a state's rights issue. Yeah. That's always, uh, that's something that we come up against all fair. Well, everything should be a state's rights issue. Yeah. Well, everything should be not decentralized. Everything. everything. Not everything. everything. We on, do have on. a constitution, so a lot of stuff 90%. isn't. But for, for uh, someone like Seamus, for instance, he thinks it should be banned federally because it's murder. I'm sure most conservatives probably think actually it's murder and it shouldn't be allowed. And then the more like governmentally conservative libertarian types are like, let the states decide. But on the moral question, conservatives outright are like, no, murder shouldn't be allowed, period. Mm -hmm. So we're moving into this similar territory to the first civil war. I call it the first civil war 20, where it's like the nation should ban the murder of babies and unborn babies are humans with unique DNA and, and should have a right should have protections under the Constitution. Well, that heartbeat side, thing was fascinating. One side is saying no to that. Oh, right. So, so you saw you saw they changed the definition of a heartbeat. They changed the definition of heartbeat. Yeah. And you know why they did? They did because of to back Stacey Abrams. That's right. They ch- no, this was, they changed it before she said that. Oh, really? Planned Parenthood changed the definition of of heartbeat. Uh, they said that it's not a heartbeat; it's cardiac activity at six weeks. Oh, well, they were saying that then, in 2017 as well, and then so was the she Atlantic. Came out and changed yeah. it. Yeah. And the reason they did this is because of the heartbeat bills that are being passed. Right. Saying yeah, they did that in 2017 in the Atlantic. And then in 2021. Changed the definition? Well, they started talking about what cardiac activity actually means. And, and then the goal Planned is, Parenthood did blogs about it in 2021 If as they well. pass a law that says once a heartbeat is detected, you can't get an abortion. They're going to say, all the media yeah. comes out and says, not a heartbeat. Well, that's, mm. you know, that's what it's been with so many things. You know, I feel like we should have a running glossary of words that have been changed to suit the Biden administration from heartbeat to recession uh, to vaccine efficacy, you know, like all of these various things. Um, we used to know what the words mean. They to keep vaccine being changed. In itself, right. the, whole, yeah, the word the entire, was changed. The Isn't word that was changed. nuts that our entire language can just mean something different if people it, in charge want it to? Well, it, they it just doesn't. change they, the it definition. They get, a, it they get a bunch of people to back it. And then when you're standing over here, standing literally on the word, which reminds me of that old gospel song from the 70s, um, when you're over here standing on the word and they're telling you the words that you're standing on have now been altered to suit their own political machinations, you know, to suit their their political needs. It's a very disconcerting to look at it yeah. and, you know, and say, like, I thought this word meant X and now it means something else to everybody else. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.